Hey everybody, welcome to Franny Square and to part three of the Fall Fireside Afghan Crochet Along. So I've been reading your comments and suggestions regarding the design of this afghan and Martha Combs sent in a suggestion to use the tree branch stitch, or I call it the tree stitch simply because tree branch stitch is very difficult for me to say. So from here on out, I'm calling it the tree stitch. In any case, I thought that was a great idea and I decided to use it for the next round of this afghan. So let me just show it to you here. This is what it looks like. And I like it, it's, it doesn't have a lot of holes through it, so it'll be a nice warm stitch. And I did three rows of it. I wanted to change up the size of my rounds. I didn't wanna make them all the same, but again, you do whatever you want and whatever you like. So this is what mine looks like so far. You can see I didn't weave in my ends yet. And I'm really liking the look of this afghan. After I finished this round, I did block my afghan. I wanted it to be uniform. And because of the way I did the jasmine stitch in the center, it wasn't quite uniform on one of the sides and it was starting to buckle a little. And blocking can hide some of those things. So I did block. And all I did to block it was lay it out on the grids, which I'll show you a picture, and pin it and spray it just with some water and I let it dry. The reason I don't use heat is because this is an acrylic yarn and acrylic can melt. So I just spritz it with water and let it dry, pinned down to the shape that I want it to be. And that works perfectly fine. And if you don't have the blocking tools, the grids and the pins, I'll put a link below to where you can get them. I got mine on Amazon and I really love them. I tried getting a less expensive set at Joann's and they were thinner and they had a terrible smell to them. So I would just recommend that if you are going to get these grids, check that out, check out the smell and check out how thick it is. I didn't know that before I bought it. So lesson learned and hopefully I can pass it on to you. Okay, so let's get started on the tree stitch. And remember, please send in pictures of the progress of your afghans for show and tell. I'm so excited at the pictures I'm seeing. People are really making this project their own. We even have one that's round right now. Okay, so grab your hook, grab your yarn, and let's get started. Okay, so now we're gonna start our next stitch along three sides, and I'm gonna do it along the one side where I don't have the cobblestone, and then up two other sides. Now you probably noticed I have an edging of single crochets that I did in my new color. And that's how we want to start out. You just want to go around the three sides, single crochet around, so you have a nice edge to work with. When you get to the corners, you're going to put three single crochets in your corner and turn the corner. Okay, so you're going to do that on three sides. But before you get started, I wanted to talk about the number of stitches you're going to need. So we're gonna be doing the tree branch stitch or the tree stitch, I've heard it called both, which requires a multiple of four stitches. So we're gonna need a multiple of four along each of our sides, not including the one corner stitch, okay? But I just want you to keep in mind the shape blanket you're doing when you're figuring out how many stitches. So, so far I have my center square, which is the jasmine stitch, and then I did three sides like this. <laughs> My drawing is not great, but you get the idea of cobblestone stitch, okay? And I did 12 rows of cobblestone stitch, okay? Now, this is not a square at this point, not only because my stitches aren't exactly even, but in general, this would not be a square yet because I didn't do the cobblestone along this side, that would have made it a square, okay? So I would have had, if I wanted a full square, I would have had 12 rows of cobblestone here. I would have had 12 rows of cobblestone here, okay? So why am I telling you this? Well, since I don't have this piece right now, I know that this side 
and this side should be equal in the number of stitches. But this side will be shorter because if I had had the 12 rows here, then it would have been a square and it would have been equal in stitches. But now it's going to be basically 12 stitches less than this side and this side. So when I'm figuring out the number of stitches I need, I want these two to be equal and then this one that I'm doing, I'm not going to do this side, this one that I'm doing will be 12 stitches less than those two. So you want to figure that out. So what I'm doing is I'm going to have 76 stitches across the top and bottom and 64 stitches along this side. Okay, so to get the right number of stitches when you're doing your first row of single crochets all the way around, because you want a multiple of four and you may not have that, you're gonna to want to either increase or decrease stitches to get to the right number. So this is just a quick lesson on increasing and decreasing. I'm just using an old sample from when I did the tutorial on the waffle stitch. I have 21 stitches going across here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to decrease. Okay, so say I wanna decrease three stitches. What I would normally do is I would do one in the beginning, one in the middle, and one in the end. I spread them out so that it's not all happening in one place. Same with increases also. If you're gonna do multiples, try to spread them out. Okay, so we'll start with my first regular single crochet. Now, if I want to decrease, I wanna turn these two stitches into one stitch. So I'm going to go into the one stitch, yarn over, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, yarn over, bring up a loop, then I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three. And now you can see I have one single crochet in the place of two. So I've decreased one. And that's as easy as it decreases. Again, I put my hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, put my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, I have three on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and there I go, I have one stitch in place of two. And that's a single crochet decrease. Now, say you want to increase rather than decrease, I'll just do another regular here. Say you want to turn this stitch into two stitches, then what I do is I do two single crochets in the same stitch makes sense. Now I had one and now I have two in place of that one. So I've increased one stitch. Again, just go into the stitch and do two single crochets in that one stitch and that's an increase. Two for one, an increase of one. So that's simply how you're gonna increase and decrease to make sure that you have the right number of stitches so that you can do the tree pattern because you do want a multiple of four. When you're putting your single crochets on, you want to take into account that you're gonna be doing three single crochets in two of the corners. So for example, I went up this side first then when I got to this corner, I put three single crochets in, one, two, three, and I put my stitch marker in the center one. Well, this first single crochet is counted along this side. So when I want to have the number of stitches, I wanna make sure that I get to one less than the number right before the corner because one of the corner stitches is gonna be on that side. Then I'm gonna have my new corner stitch, and then this stitch that's also in the corner is going to be counted along this side. So you want to make sure that you take that into account when you're doing your single crochet around. And you remember, you want to have a multiple of four, you want your top and bottom to be the same, and your side will be shorter based on the number of rows you did of your last pattern of the cobblestone stitch. Okay, so go put your single crochets all the way around, making sure that in the corners where you do a turn, not your first corner, because you're not turning, this is where you're starting, so you just have a single crochet in that corner, but the ones where you're actually gonna turn the corner, you have three single crochets, and that's two corners that we're turning. And then when we get to the other end, 
it's just a single crochet in your last stitch. Okay, so once you get your single crochet all the way around and you get to your last corner, we're going to chain three, turn our work, and do a double crochet in that same stitch that we just did the chain three in. Okay. Then we're going to skip three chains, one, two, three, and in the fourth, we're gonna put three double crochets. One, two, <laughs> forgive me, I'm trying to look through the camera and I just can't do it, three, okay. Then we're gonna skip three chains again, one, two, three, and in the fourth, we're gonna put three double crochets again. And we're gonna do this all the way up the side. So three double crochets. Then you're gonna skip three chains, one, two, three, and in the fourth, put three more double crochets. So just continue that way along the side and I'll meet you at the corner. Okay, now I'm getting to my corner here and I just did three double crochets in this stitch and then I have one, two, three, which brings me to my corner stitch. So I'm just gonna take this out and I'm going to do three double crochets in that corner. One, two, and three, and then I'm going to put my stitch marker back in the center of those three double crochets. That'll become my new corner. And I will continue down the other side. So I'm going to skip one, two, three, and then three double crochets into my next stitch. Okay, and then continue along, skipping three chains and doing three double crochets in the fourth. And continue and I'll meet you at the corner. Okay, so I'm getting to my second corner here. I have three chains. I'm gonna take my stitch marker out And I'm gonna put three double crochets right in the corner. One, two, and three. And I'll put my stitch marker back into the second double crochet there to mark my corner. And then I will skip three chains, put three double crochets in the fourth. Let's see, one, two, three, right in the fourth. One, two, three. Skip three chains, one, two, three, and again in the fourth, three double crochets. Continue that way all the way down till you get to the bottom of this side, and I will meet you there. Okay, so I'm getting to the bottom edge here. I'm gonna skip the last three chains, and in the last, in the corner space there, I'm gonna put two double crochets. One and two. All right, then I'm going to chain three, turn my work, and put another double crochet right in that space there. Now, in this first space here, I'm going to double crochet into the space 
Okay. Then I'm going to go below and into the center chain that I skipped. I'm going to do a double crochet into that. And then that kind of divides up that space because I went into the chain and it's pulling this up, but this is still part of that space. It's before the three double crochets. I'm going to do another double crochet into that space. Okay. And I'm going to do that in every space going along. Those are my trees. So in the next space, I'm going to double crochet into the space. Then I'm going to double crochet into the center chain that I skipped. This becomes like my trunk because it's being attached to the lower row. And then I'm going to go into that space before the three double crochets and do another double crochet. So the way this is working, these are my trees. So I have the trunk in the middle and then one on each side, one branch on each side. So then I'll go into my next space, do a double crochet. Then I'm going to go into the center chain, do a double crochet. And into the space before my three double crochets start and do a double crochet. You're going to continue doing that along in each space and I'll meet you as you get to the corner. Okay, so now I'm getting to my corner here. I just did my last tree before the corner and here's my corner. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker and right in that corner stitch there, I'm going to do three double crochets. put my stitch marker back into the center of those three double crochets to mark my corner. And I'll go to this next space here and begin my tree doing my double crochet into the space, double crochet into the middle chain. And another double crochet into that space there. You start to get used to looking at it. And then I'm going to continue down again in all the spaces making my trees. When I get to the next corner, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put three double crochets in the corner. So I'll do my tree right before, three double crochets, tree after, and then continue down to the end and I'll meet you at the end there. Okay, I'm getting to the end of the last side here. I have another space. I'm gonna do my last tree here. Double crochet into the space, double crochet into the center chain. And a double crochet into the space there. There we go. And then, in the top of my chain three that I did in the beginning, right there, one, two, three, I'm going to put a double crochet right in the top of that chain there. And then I'm going to chain three and turn my work. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. It's really a beautiful stitch. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put another double crochet right into that same space. And that's just to give me a nice little edge. There we go. Now, I'm going to go over to my first space between these and I'm going to do a tree like I normally would. So I do a double crochet into the chain space and then I go to, instead of a chain below, I have three double crochets. I'm going to go to the center one there 
and do a double crochet into that. And then a double crochet into that space. Now I know it's hard to find, so just look for your three double crochets and it's right before it there. And the reason it's so small is because you cut it in half by putting a double crochet in the center of that space. So now it's just half of that space. So you're gonna do a double crochet right there. And you'll get used to looking at that. Then I'll skip my three double crochets and go to my next space. And again, double crochet into the chain space. Then a double crochet into the center of the three double crochets below. This is what you're gonna be doing from here on out. This is your repeat. Okay, so that was that space. And then I move over to my next space and I continue that. Keep going till you get to your corner. Then we'll discuss the corners and then you will be off and running on your own. You can do this for as many rounds as you would like, depending on how thick you want this round to be. But I think this is going to be really beautiful. I'll meet you at the corner. Now, as we approach the corner, we have a tree here and then there's really only one space and then our corner because we had three double crochets and we're going to have this each corner. So we're going to be doing this each round the same way. So I'm still going to make a tree in this corner. I'm going to do a double crochet into this space. And then I'm just gonna do a double crochet underneath into one of these spaces here, whichever you wanna choose. Like that. And then back into the space again, another double crochet. And that's just because we only had three double crochets in the corner. Okay, now I'm going to take my corner stitch out, my corner stitch marker out, and I'm gonna put three double crochets right into that corner. So this will always be our corner, always doing the same thing here. One, two, and three, and I'll put my stitch marker in the center of those three. There we go. <laughs> Had to make sure it was the right one. And then I'll continue around again. So this first space here, again, is gonna be smaller. It's not gonna be your normal uh, your normal three double crochets below. So I'm just gonna use that space there. So I'm gonna go into this space here, do a double crochet, then right below, do a double crochet, and then into this space again. Get in there and double crochet. And then I'll continue in each of the spaces all the way down, making my trees. And that's it. When I get to the next corner, I'll do the same thing. This is what my corners look like. Then when I get to the bottom here of the last row, I'm gonna put my tree in this space. And then over here, I'm gonna do a double crochet in the top of the chain three. And then I'll turn my work. And I'll do another double crochet in that space and I'll move on to each of the spaces doing my trees. And you'll just do that for as many rounds as you like. I'm not sure how many I'm gonna do yet, but my thought is I'm gonna make this a thinner round. I think it'll look nice against this thick one. So I may just do one more round after this and keep it nice and thin. I'll meet you at the end and then we'll find out what I did. <laughs> okay, so this is what it looks like. I actually blocked it and I have it upside down right now because when I sprayed it, I dried on the top side and it hadn't dried on the bottom side yet, but I think it's dry now. And as far as the tree stitch goes, I ended up doing one, two, three rows of the tree stitch. I kept it fairly small. I thought it would be nice to change up the size of the rounds. 
Okay, so I hope you're excited about doing the tree stitch for your third round of this afghan. And please, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below or send them to my email address at frannysquare at gmail.com. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own and I'll see you soon.